Hey everybody and welcome back to another tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to get stable diffusion on your computer, which you might think, oh that's a simple tutorial. No, I've seen so many tutorials that get in the weeds and you need to know how to code and all. You just want to get stable diffusion on your fucking computer, okay? So I'm going to teach you how to do that and uh, what we are going to go for, the end result is getting you to have this screen on your computer, uh, which is going to let you do things like cat eating a watermelon. And by the way, you can do so much more than what I'm about to show you. This is going to be like a, a little drop in the bucket. But cat eating a watermelon, and there we go. We have a cat eating a watermelon. I'm going to get you to this point if you just watch this video. Don't skip around. You're going to miss stuff. So uh, before we begin, I just want to say uh, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, and I will be talking about them more at the end of the video. So I'm going to assume that you just have Windows computer, and you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Here's how we do this. So... Uh, first of all, let me just close everything, 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 everything. So you're going to start by opening Chrome or whatever browser you're using. Can you do that? Good. If you have that, the next step is you're going to type in automatic 1111 web UI. Already we're getting complicated. Just type this in, okay? There's going to be a link in the description. You're going to go here. So we just need to get to this page. You can either look it up or go to the link in the description. What this is, it is a web UI of stable diffusion. What that means is it's going to give you a user interface uh, to run stable diffusion. Um, in other words, you're not going to need to mess around with code. That's what this is. So you're going to see there's a lot of stuff going on. And we just need to get to the point where we have it downloaded. So here we have all the features. Just go down here to the installation uh, area. Uh, automatic installation on Windows, okay? It's gonna lay out exactly what we need to do and we are gonna follow those steps. So step one, we are going to, and I'm gonna assume you haven't done any of these steps. Step one, install Python 3.10.6 and then as you install it, click add Python to path. So you're gonna be tempted. You're gonna go to this link and you're gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna download Python. I'm just gonna hit this. No, 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 no. This is 3.11.1. For real, get 3.10.6, I installed a different version and it did not work, okay? Um, to avoid this, and, and instead of just scrolling down to where it says 3.10.6, which you can do, instead of that, just go to this dependencies link, and then in this, uh, it says the same thing, Python 3.10.6, um, it's going to have a automatic uh, link for you. So you're going to go to this, you're going to hit exe, and it's going to download this. I already have it downloaded, Okay. So download 3.10.6. Once you have that, you are going to have this file right here. Here you can see I downloaded 0.11.1, which I should not have done. 3.10.6. You're going to run this. Now it's going to look a little different for me because I've already run this. It's going to say, oh, you already installed it. You want to install it again? You're going to see I'm installing this for the first time. Uh, you're also going to see a checkbox right away, um, or at least after a page or two that says add Python to path. You're gonna enable that checkbox and then you're gonna go page by page by page and click accept, 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 accept. You don't need this part of the tutorial. You just say accept a bunch of times, but you're gonna make sure to say um, add Python to path because if you do not do that, the rest of this will not work. The next step is you're going to install Git. You can see I already installed it or downloaded it here. Uh, when you click this, uh, it's going to send you to the Git page. You are going to pick, assuming you have a 64-bit system, which you probably do, you are going to do the standalone installer. You're going to click this. It's going to lead you to a download. I already have it. So again, this is just going to be a case of hitting download, download, down, or sorry, accept, 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 accept. So I can launch this. It's going to look a little different for me, I assume, since I've already done it. But you can see what, what, it, what it looks like. You hit next, you hit next. You don't need to change any of this. Just hit next a bunch of times. So at this point, you have Python 3.10.6. You have Git. What are you doing with this? Well, what we are going to be doing is we're going to be using Git and the Python to download the rest of this. This step does not work if you did not do the previous. So I want you to run command prompt. If you don't know how to do that, uh, go to your programs, type in CMD or command prompt, and uh, it's going to open up this little interface. So this is the only part where we get Cody. The only thing we are gonna be doing is running this command, which we're just gonna copy and paste. Now you're gonna notice at the beginning of this command, it says git. That does not work unless you installed Git. Um, so 
what this command is going to do, just in case you don't want me to like fuck up your computer, it's going to download all of this. You could also just go to code uh, download zip. That works too. But it if eventually you're going to need to update it and Git does that automatically, so it's worth doing it. So instead of going to code and download, what we are going to do is we are just going to run this command. Now I'm going to Basically, it's going to download a file for us. So the question is, where do we want that file? I'm going to put it on the desktop. So I'm going to type in CD change directory, change command prompt to be in the directory of the desktop. And you can see now, instead of being at user slash owner, now we're at user slash owner slash desktop. In other words, we're looking inside the desktop. And inside that desktop, I want you to run this command, copy it, paste it, hit enter. Now, uh, one thing that I want to mention is I have already run this command. So you're going to see a uh, destination path already exists and is not an empty directory. For you, it's going to just start running fucking code and downloading shit. It's going to take a while. You're going to sit there and you are going to wait. And then if you try to do it again, it's going to say you've already downloaded it. Okay, so again, all of these steps I've already done, but I'm just walking you through it. So we have Python, we have Git, we ran this command. Now, what you are going to have once you've uh, done that command is you're going to get a folder. That's what that command does is it makes this folder called stable diffusion web UI. If you look at yours, it's going to look like this. Um, at this point, you can actually run it. Um, however, this is kind of like saying I have the web UI. I can use stable diffusion, but we don't have the model. We don't have the actual stable diffusion to run it with. So in other words, I'm saying open stable diffusion interface. Where the fuck is stable diffusion? So we're going to download that too. Uh, but just so you know, uh, if you go to the bottom, you're going to see web UI slash user, and that's going to be a Windows batch file. Don't open these shell scripts. You're going to run this again for the first time. It's going to probably download a bunch of things too. Um, when you launch this, this is how you open the web UI. This is how I got that interface where I typed in cat with watermelon. So you want to open this up, and this will take a second. It will probably take longer again. Uh, if this is the first time you're doing it. And as this is doing all the things it's doing, at the end, it's going to give us a URL, a local hosted URL, and that's how we open it. Okay, in other words, you're going to hit the batch file. It's going to do a bunch of shit. Once it's done doing the shit, which it's uh, taking a second, uh, you're going to see running on local URL. Take this and copy it. I know, it looks like code. This is just how you open it. You just copy, paste, and that's how you get there. So we've gotten there. We did it. The only thing that I have right now that you don't is this thing right here that says which model. I'm using 1.5. You could use 1.4. 2.0 is actually a bit more complicated. You do not have this. Um, in fact, if you go into your models folder, again, you have a models folder. You go into models. You go into stable diffusion. You are just going to have this thing here. You're not going to have this. This is the step that I have that you do not. So this is what I'm saying. You have stable diffusion web UI, but you don't have the model to run it with. You don't have 1.4 or 1.5. So the final step, all of that is to say, uh, we now go to place the model CKPT. That stands for checkpoint. Put the model in the models folder, which I've already done, uh, but you don't fucking have the model. So what you're going to do is you're going to see, uh, go back to that dependencies link that we opened. And then in the models right here, the CKPT file, uh, you can go to the official download page. So here you could see we have a 1.4 original, or you could download 1.5 or runway one. Download any model that you want. Uh, really, 1.4 or 1.5 though. <laughs> Some of them fuck it up. Um, so this is where you get the file. So you could just go to um, uh, files and versions. You're gonna see a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you click the uh, 1.4 version. Uh, the CKPT, and uh, you can click download. Or you could do the 1.5. You could see in this case, I did the 1.5. You're just going to get a big file called CKPT, and then you just drag it into this folder, okay? I would do it, but it's like four gigabytes, <laughs> so I don't need it. But what you could do is you could have a bunch of models here. I could have 1.4 and 1.5. Just bring any model, a model, into here. Now, when you run this, when you run the thing and you open the URL, you're going to see it on this list. Make sure you restart it if you added it as it's open. So you want to select a model. So now I'm using 1.5. Maybe you're using 1.4. 
you are now going to type in, we did the tutorial. I'm actually curious to see what image this spits out. Now, I know there's a bunch of settings here. We'll talk about those in a different video. Okay, we did the tutorial. I don't know what the fuck that image is. Let, let's do a better celebration. Let's say, let's say person doing a jumping jack as a celebration. Hopefully knows what a jumping jack is. And there we go, we've done it. Of course, there's like a lot of parameters like saying, oh, I wanna generate multiple images, I wanna generate better images, but you got to the point where you now have stable diffusion on your fucking computer. So the rest of this is how do you use it? That's in a future video. So hopefully this was the most understandable guide to get stable diffusion running. I know a lot of the steps took a bit longer on your computer because it was the first time. Sit there and wait. Most of these things do not spit errors. They just take a long time to download. So if you're frozen at a step, wait 20 minutes, okay? So hopefully uh, this was a understandable tutorial. And other than that, uh, I do want to say uh, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know if you want more tutorials like this in the future. And uh, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. So let me talk about them. Let's go on the full screen, boys. So this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you do not know what Squarespace is, it is the best way to build a website without any of the coding or the nonsense. Just like this, the stable diffusion, we didn't want to mess with code. Um, Squarespace is the website equivalent of that. You can design a website using templates. You just drag and drag and drop blocks and it just works beautifully. My website, www.cgmatter.com is made with Squarespace. Uh, three features you might be interested in when you get Squarespace is one, analytics, so you can see who is going to your website, demographic type information. Two, you can embed Twitter and other social media feeds directly into your website. So you don't need to redirect somebody off of Twitter or to Twitter. Keep people on your website, okay? And three, like I said, automatic image cropping and automatic block placement. You don't need to code, just templates. So um, when you're ready to make a website, okay? You use your free trial, you've designed your website, great, you wanna take it live. You can use my link in the description to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. So, you know, make that, make that website, okay? With Squarespace. Thank you for watching.